Dear Lord, thank you so much for your presence at Vacation Bible School. Because we've been here, we've felt closer to you. And, and we love you so much. And as we finish tonight, we may, may we be closer and closer to Jesus. But help us to remember that even when Vacation Bible School is over, every day we can still be close to him and close to our guardian angel. Bless us now in this special night at Vacation Bible School in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Are you guys excited? This is our last evening. I'm excited and I'm very sad as well because we've had a great time together, haven't we? So, um, this past week we've talked about all the different parts of the sanctuary and today we get to talk about the last part. But before we do, I'm going to quickly review so I can find out if you guys still know the names of all the different parts, all the different furniture, okay? So, this piece of furniture right here behind me with the sticks on top, what is it called? The altar. Okay. Altar. altar of? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Good job. All right. You guys got it. All right. On um, this side, this bowl of water, what is it called? It's the labor. 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 Close. <laughs> very, very good. Or wash basin. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then, next to that, inside of the sanctuary, because this was outside in the courtyard. Um, inside of the sanctuary, as you look inside on the right side, it's in front of you here, there's a table. What is it called? Jonah. Table of showbread. Table of showbread, that's right. And there are two stacks of bread. And do you remember what the, what the bread stood for? The Ten Commandments. No, close. The Ten Commandments are in this. Yes, Nadia, go ahead. Jesus, that's right, but uh, he is the bread of life, and there's something else about the bread that reminds us to do something. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. Go ahead, Gracie. Two stacks of bread is for the Old Testament and the New Testament. Good job. Good remembering. That's right. It's the two parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they both talk about Jesus because Jesus is the bread of life, and as we read the Bible... We get to know about Jesus, right? That's right. Okay, so behind the table of showbread is something else. What is that called? The candlestick. Very good, Josephine. <laughs> but you got to wait for me to call on you, sweetheart. Good job, though. That's right. That's the candlestick. And it's the seventh branch candlestick. We only have five on ours, but it's supposed to be seven. Um, and what did that stand for? Do you guys remember? Yes, Connor. The light of the world. That's right. Jesus is the light of the world, and he wants us to be the light of the world. And how are we the light of the world? Anybody know? Yes, Natalie. <laughs> by spreading, spreading the gospel. Then by spreading the gospel, by telling everybody the good news that Jesus loves them, and by being kind to people, and being faithful and loving them. Because we, if we just tell them about it, but we don't show them that, Jesus, that we love them, then they won't really believe us, right? Okay, all right. So there's another altar inside of the holy place. What one, What was that one called? Who remembers? Okay, go ahead, John. Uh, altar of incense. Good job, that's right. It's the altar of incense. And what does that remem remind us to do? Yes, God. Pray. To pray, that's right. Jesus is praying in heaven for us so that God will forgive our sins and get us ready for heaven. And he wants us to pray for everybody here. If someone is sick, if someone is hurting, if someone is in trouble, or if they just need to know Jesus, we need to pray for them, right? So that reminds us to pray. Very good. Well, we've come to the last one. Who? Well, ha ha. You have the answer on the, on the screen. What, what are we going to be talking about tonight? Callie? Callie? The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is very, very special. In fact, in the sanctuary, it was actually only allowed to be seen one time a year because the priest would go and minister inside of the uh, court because, of course, the people would bring the uh, lambs to, for their sacrifice and they would go into the holy place every day probably to trim the wicks of the light so that it could keep burning. And of course every seventh day we'd go and replace the bread. 
And they did all those things every single week and every single day. But the, well, in the most holy place, there was only one time where they were going, when only one person was supposed to go in there. And it was the high priest. Oh, okay, can you guys see him okay? His face is kind of shaded. This is actually a mannequin. It wasn't a real person. When I went to the Messiah's mansion and saw that they had a, a, like, you know, have you guys have seen mannequins in stores that are all dressed up as, you know, with different clothes? That's what this guy was. He had a beard and he had his, um, it's called a mitre, like a crown on his head with kind of a white um, turban on his head too. I'm not sure if you could see that very well, but you can see the shininess on the top. And on the top it says, Holiness to the Lord. That's what it says on the top of his hat looking thing that he had on his head. And then do you see that the same colors that are on the sanctuary are on his shirt? See the different blue and purple and red are on there as well? Because he had a very special vest on top of his white linen clothes that had that. And then in the very middle of his chest was a beautiful, beautiful breastplate that had 12 different gems. There were 12 because they stood for each of the tribes of Israel. And what's really special about those stones is that God keeps us close to his heart. And when the high priest would go and pray on behalf of the people, he would have each of the tribes of Israel on his heart, on his chest area. For we remember that God cared for each one of them for each one of his people, for each one of the tribes of Israel. So it's very special. And he has other decorations on the side of the road that were pomegranates and bells and different things like that that stood for various different things. We don't have time to go into all the details. But the high priest, dressed in his very special robes, went into the most holy place one time a year because it was the time of the cleansing of the sanctuary. They had to clean it up because all of this blood that was put on the, taken from the lambs and from the other animals, they were sprinkled on the curtain, they were sprinkled all around and they needed to clean the place. And this was a evidence that God was wanting to get rid of sin for all of the year, for all of the people of Israel. But it was um, a symbol for the fact that he wanted to get rid of sin forever. And the Ark of the Covenant talks about that in many different ways. But we want to review what is inside of the Ark of the Covenant before we finish up. Who can remember the three things that are in there? Okay, Chan, what's one of them? Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod. Very good. Carry on. Aaron's rod is a reminder that God chose Aaron, which was Moses' brother, to be the high priest. So he would be the one that would have worn the special outfit. So that's right. He was the one that did that. And it's a reminder to us that God chooses us to be priests and to be the ones that share the gospel. And so he has chosen us to be his chosen generation, to share with others about God. Okay? What's another What's one, of, what's one other thing? Okay, Ryland, you tell me. What's, there's two more things in the ark. The Ten Commandments, good job. That's right, okay. So here's the first um, tablet. Let's see if I can do this while I... <laughs> too many things in there. Okay, so here it is. This one has a short version of each of the Ten Commandments. The first one says, put God first. That means you should have no other gods before me. And then fear to God. Don't worship anything else besides God. The third one is God's name is special. So we shouldn't say things like, oh my, because that's taking God's name in vain. But it also means that we shouldn't pretend to be Christians and act mean and rude to people, right? And also the fourth one says, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. This is how we show love to God. He wants us to remember these four ways. And then, this is how we show love to others. The first one is to love and obey your parents. The next one it says, do not kill. The next one says, um, do not break your promise in marriage. So be faithful to your husband or wife. Do not steal. Do not lie. And then, be happy with what you have. How many of you guys have a hard time with balance sometimes? 
I know sometimes I want to have this and I want to have that. But God wants us to remember that He's going to take care of everything we need and sometimes even give us some things that we want. But we should trust Him that He's going to take care of us. Are those good laws? Do you think that God's government has good laws? Yeah. I think so too. But you know what's hard? Our selfish hearts, because they have sin in them, we don't like to do these things, do we? We'd rather be selfish. We'd rather, um, you know, not obey our parents. Who has trouble with that? Once they find out, we would rather. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Who has trouble sometimes wanting more than we have? <laughs> sometimes it's hard to keep these laws, but you know what the magic, the, not magic, but special thing that God is doing is just like these commandments are inside of the ark, He wants us to be like the ark and have these commandments in our hearts. And that's the miracle that God makes for each one of us so that we will love His law and that He will help us to keep it because we can't keep it by ourselves, right? All right, one more thing that we didn't talk about. Adelie, do you know what was it? A bowl of manna. A bowl of manna. You guys remember very good. That's right, the bowl of manna, or for me, it's key one. <laughs> I don't know what manna looked like. You know what's special about this? The fact that when the people of Israel walked for 40 years in the wilderness, waiting to go from Egypt into Sinai, and they weren't supposed to go that long, it's just that they weren't ready to go into Canaan when God told them to. But you know what? God provided for them and took care of them and provided for their food every single day for 40 years. Does that mean that He's going to take care of us until He comes back? Yeah. Yes, it does mean that. Okay, I'm going to set this back and then I'll talk about the mercy seat. You know what I thought about while I was preparing for these talks? You remember what we talked about that the mercy seat would have um, the angels on it? And why do you think the angels are there? What do you think, Connor? It's true that God's presence is there. Are there angels and other beings in other worlds? Yeah. And did you guys notice that there are angels on the curtains? Do you think that angels are involved in our salvation, in helping us to make good choices, in protecting us? They're all part of God's plan to bring us back to heaven, right? And so they were looking in amazement at God's plan to protect us and to take care of us. But in the middle over here is where God would shine His presence. He would have a special cloud called the Shekinah glory. And He would come and talk to Moses there. Or sometimes He would spread His presence all through the sanctuary that nobody could go in. But this is where He would show His presence in this cloud. And you know what? I thought about something. A cloud and angels? What does that remind you? Heaven, that's right. But specifically, a special thing that we're waiting for. Yes, Marissa. Jesus coming back to take us home. Because you know what's special about the ark? It reminds us that Jesus, the day of atonement, the day that we were talking about cleansing from sin, the word at one at one meant, which is what atonement means, is that God wants to be back together with us. Remember the verse we were singing? Let them make me a sanctuary so I could dwell among them. That means to live with them. God wants to live with us. And He wants us to live with Him forever, right? Amen. So He's going to send Jesus at the end of this whole cleanup of sin in our hearts, especially, and prepare us for heaven so He can come back with the angels in a cloud of glory, just like the Ark of the Covenant would have had. It was a promise that Jesus was going to come back for us, and He was going to take us home. Remember Jesus told the disciples, let, um, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If, I would have, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare a place for you, I will come again and bring you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So, God wants to be together with us again. And that's what the Ark of the Covenant is all about. He wants to make us perfect and have His law in our hearts, and He wants to give us mercy, and He wants to bring us home. He wants to bring us home to be together with Him forever. So, I want you guys to remember that when you think about the sanctuary. 